Hi, I'm Zach Fisher, and ever since fourth grade, I've been a problem solver. Now you're probably wondering, well, what happened in fourth grade? Did I have a cool teacher, or go to a cool class, or even come see a cool TED talk? No, it was better. <laughs> when I was in fourth grade, I saw my very own computer explode before my eyes. <laughs> it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Watching the components one by one get engulfed in smoke and flames was so cool, but what I remember being cooler was watching the computer tech put it all back together. The complexity of components which he finessed with ease into a brand new computer just left me dumbfounded. This really sparked my interest in computers and technology in general. Six years later, I walk into the MIT Media Lab. I'm interning at a tech startup called CoreSites, and walking in and seeing no other kids was a little bit intimidating, but what I really remember was being fascinated. Corsets is a biofeedback-based virtual reality company working out of MIT. We specialize in teaching you how to control your heart rate with your breathing. The product that Corsets is currently working on is a piece of software that can be used across industries to reduce anxiety. We do this by using a virtual reality headset and a biofeedback sensor placed on your finger. Trust me, it's cool. On my first day at Corsets, I overheard some talk about the technology behind our sensor. And my coworkers were talking about how it was, it was cool, but it was kind of big and bulky, and it was expensive. We're talking like $300. So, as a naive 14-year-old, I thought to myself, I bet you I could build a better one, and I bet you I could do it for cheaper. On my second day at Corsets, I designed a new finger sensor for $7. <laughs> I spent the previous night watching endless YouTube videos, um, researching a ton, and not sleeping and I came in the next day with a finished schematic of my design. After hours of research, I realized that all a basic finger sensor was was an infrared emitter and an infrared detector mounted really close to your finger. And based on the amount of light the detector received, we could determine if there was blood flowing through your finger and then get a heartbeat. It was pretty simple. Now, every time people ask me, every time I tell this story, people always ask me, well, how'd you come up with the idea of designing a finger sensor on your very first day there? Or how'd you even get the courage to suggest a redesign? As I said before, my curiosity for problem solving was not a recent development. It all started with the exploding computer. Now, after watching that computer explode in fourth grade, I spent the next couple of years learning everything there was to know about modern-day PCs. And I rebuilt my computer over and over and over again. Why? Well, not just for the flashy new LEDs, but because there was always something wrong with my computer. <laughs> it was never fast enough for me. I always wanted more GPU or CPU performance. I found the problem, and I fixed it. It was easy. Two years later, in sixth grade, I saw the most amazing drone footage of Chernobyl. It was almost as cool as the exploding computer. After seeing this, I realized I just needed a drone. So I got a job, I worked some hours, and I bought myself one. Except just over a month in, my drone had a fatal crash. Now, flying this drone was one of my favorite things to do. I mean, I was the only kid in sixth grade with a drone. How cool was that? And right now, this drone was broken, and I was devastated. I was willing to do whatever it took to get this thing back in the air. So I tried everything I could think of. I turned it on, and then off, and then on, and then <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> After many hours of trying that, I realized that there was a pretty big difference between my drone in its current state and the drone in the flying state, and I needed to do something about it. So I looked for a local mentor. Someone who could teach me how drones worked, how to fly drones, how to fix drones, how to build drones, anything. But I found no one. I started binge-watching drone YouTube videos. YouTube became my personal mentor. This is when I knew I was a certified nerd. <laughs> now, after hours of research, I realized that what was wrong with my drone was I had a broken motor. And to fix this motor, I would need to learn how to solder. Now, soldering is essentially the process of using a 750-degree pencil to melt metal, to join wires, and to make an electrical connection. And after teaching myself how to do this, <laughs> I had to learn how to treat burn wounds. <laughs> I remember just a few months after uh, fixing my first drone, I set out to build a drone from scratch. Now, this is an incredibly ambitious project, because the drones I had been working with previously already had an existing framework laid out. I knew where everything went, I knew how everything worked. It was simple, it made sense to me. But for this drone, I would literally have to start from the ground up. Now, the first time after I watched that drone fly, I realized what I had just done. 
I'd spent the past couple of weeks working endlessly in my basement to get every part of this drone to work exactly like it should. And it did. And now it was in the air. And it was flying. And I felt like I could do anything. Just picture that drone. Um, so if you're going to take one thing away from this talk, it's that the difference between you and me is simply this. When I was in fourth grade, I got to see my computer explode. <laughs> That's it. Now, I'm not saying you should go home and light your computer on fire. <laughs> Seriously, don't. <laughs> But everyone know what's in there? Get inspired. Break things. Fix things. Go nuts. Thank you.